Welcome BearCast fans, this is Mike Quinlan up here at the Little Rose Bowl with Jason Miller on our Thursday night before the second round playoff game in uh, Class 1A, Jason. We're heading up to Monona, MFL Marmac. It's looking like it could be a chillier, windy night, so I imagine we'll have a, a lot of lookers on the BearCast. But what can you tell us about MFL? They're eight and one, won their district. Obviously, we played them last year in the quarterfinals uh, to a 27-24 game. But this year, they're a different team. They are I, actually they have a majority of the same guys back. To be quite okay. honest with you, other than the quarterback, we talked about that before we recorded. He's he's moved on somewhere else. But they have been, as you've probably seen, and a lot of team. A lot of people around have probably seen the last two or three years, they've really gotten better and better and better. Mm -hmm. And then they're eight and one. The one team they lost to, Sumner Fredericksburg, was on a nice rainy evening where it was raining here, but it was worse in Northeast Iowa and their field was in shambles. And how, how do you hold a team to negative like 49 rushing yards and lose? It's a tough night, but, <laughs> but they're going to come back around. And since then, they've kind of been lights out. Well, and Sumner Fredericksburg is in the final 16 in yes. 1A. So. As is Dyke New Hartford. As is Dyke. Yeah, so they play, <laughs> they play in a very good district, but obviously we do too because yes. Regina and Wilton both were on in the first round. But, yeah, how do you see this MFL team? Uh, more of a run than a pass? Yeah, definitely. You're going to see – I mean, the quarterback is just below 500 yards passing on the season. They got four guys who run the football. They got – when I, uh, Quinn Magoo, McGee, I, I, I try, I'm respectfully, I want to know how to pronounce his name mm -hmm. correctly, but he's just under 700 yards. Wyatt Powell, a guy we saw last year as well, number zero, zero, he's just under 600 yards, but he's also, you know, he's got 19 total touchdowns with receiving. And then uh, the quarterback Carver, blitz beaten. We talked under 500 yards passing, but he's also got 400 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. They just run and run and run at you, and they come at you like the old wing T, Mike, and we know a lot about that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, last week, you know, we beat a very good Pleasantville. Yeah. Probably saw what I think was the best quarterback oh my gosh. in the state. So the fact that MFL's a running team, I think, is going to play into our strength because – um, last week we held that guy averaging 136 cook to 20 yards. Yeah. So um, and and we won the line thing offensively and defensively, and that's going to be the key again tomorrow night. Agreed. Up front is where the Bears have have made their money all year. There's only been one game I saw all year at the 1A level. We won't count Williamsburg because they mm -hmm. were just a different beast. Mm -hmm. But at the 1A level, I think the only game West Branch really saw up front. Throughout, you know, towards the end of a game where they got uh, beat up, it's probably against Wilton. Yeah. But other than that, they've been they've been there in the fourth quarter all the way throughout. Mike, it's just a different beast with this team this week, though. Yeah. You go from a a cook who's a one eleven hundred yard rusher to now you got four guys. They're going to come at you from left. They're going to not quite see her to kill them, but they're going to spin them. Right, and they run the I believe the old wing the team. Old the old wing Bears. team. So you got a full back, you got a tail back, you got a quarterback, and you got a wing back. That you got to be heads up yeah. for them and your head's on a swivel. But again, I I like the Bears' chances with the way our defensive line played last week. They were Logan Wright and Quentin Rocha and Michael Montgomery were just outstanding. And then you throw possibly with a guy that we've you've started to see it the last few weeks come alive. Is you don't see a kid that size and that quick off the ball very much at the defensive line is Cooper Gates. Yeah. His first step, is it's so low mm -hmm. and it's so quick that I don't think some teams have seen that are, are going to be used to that. But you're right, I think, with the other guys up front. And then you throw a Trent shooting, a Shea Farmer, and, of course, Reese Trapanier from the middle. Yeah. And that's a pretty good front seven. Yeah. They're going to get tested all over the field running it, man. Well, and Cooper, you know, he can set on the edge and rush. Yeah. And then we saw him drop back into coverage and make plays. Right. So a lot of versatility with, with him. Glad to have him back. Might have a chance of getting Zach Capper back, 
which would be great because Zach's a, a good athlete. But we also may not see Braden Sexton, unfortunately. Started all year as, as safety and really was a highlight reel on special teams. <laughs> oh, he he's in on everybody. It was last year, too. You'd call his name a lot. Yeah. So he's a special player. It'd be tough. Hopefully, you know, if the Bears can get past this game on, on Friday night, that uh, he'll be back ready to go for the following week. But, man... It's always good to be playing football this time of year, Mike, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you are, too. Yeah, so we should have a great game tomorrow night. Again, game starts at 7 o'clock on the BearCast. So if you can't make it up to Monona, get on and listen to the BearCast. So for Jason Miller, this is Mike Quinlan saying go Bears.